Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. And this is what it says. There's one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Pray with me. Lord, healing, that's what we need because you're the one that brings healing. Strength, it's what we need and you're the one that brings strength. Breathe the strength and the healing of your spirit on us this morning as we gather. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Norman Cousins tells a story about a football game in Southern California. That soon after the game start, started, four men reported to the first aid station that they were experiencing cramps, nausea, symptoms of food poisoning. And after some discussion, the doctor discovered that they all four had had soda there at the concession stand at the stadium. So he asked that uh, over the PA system, an announcement be made that some people had had the symptoms of food poisoning who had had the soda, so as to stay away from drinking the soda there at the stadium. Well, something unexpected happened. All over the stadium, people started retching. They started experiencing symptoms of food poisoning. They started having cramping and dizziness. They began having nausea. And 191 people went to local hospitals complaining of the symptoms of food poisoning. Well, after a little more discussion with the original four, it turned out that it wasn't the soda at all that they had all had the same potato salad that was tainted before the game. And that was what it was. Well, when the report was made to the 191 that went to the local hospitals, all recovered immediately. Well, that's the power of a word. <laughs> that's the power of a word. And our words do have power. We know that. We've experienced that. We felt it. One of the things that Wilfred Peterson said, he said that soft words sung in a lullaby will put a baby to sleep. Excited words will, will stir a mob to violence. Eloquent words will send armies marching into the face of death. Encouraging words will fan to flame the genius of a Rembrandt or a Lincoln. Words are the swords we use in our battle for success and happiness. Life is a great whispering gallery that sends back echoes of the words we send out. A whispering gallery that sends back echoes of the words that we send out. The words that we send out. Well, the way that the Proverbs puts it, the tongue of the wise brings healing. That it's our words that bring healing. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Healing words. Healing words. And the first word that I want to talk about this morning, the first healing word, is that, that healing word of thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It 
It says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I don't know that the will of God stated any more plainly. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That it's that word of thanks. It's that word of thanks. It's certainly a healing word. And it's why we come together and worship every Sunday is to practice that word of thanks. Chuck Swindoll tells a story about a veteran who is having physical therapy in a veteran's hospital. Well, at the time, the VA hospitals didn't allow anybody under the age of 12 to go into the hospital. Well, this veteran had long physical therapy to go through and he desperately wanted to see his son so he asked his wife if she could bring their son to the courtyard he was five years old little boy and that way he'd be able to see him from his his room well he purchased a gift for the little boy it was a toy truck he carefully wrapped it and then he gave it to one of the orderlies and asked if if he would give the gift to his little boy who was down in the courtyard well, the orderly went down there, met his wife and his little boy and gave the little boy the gift, said, this is from your father. Well, the little boy unwrapped it and he loved the truck. And then he started to give the orderly a hug. That's when the orderly realized that the little boy misunderstood. He said, no, 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 this is from your father. And he's up there on the fifth floor. Let's count the floors. So together they counted one, two, three, four, five. And there the little boy saw his father looking at him and waving to him from the window. And that's when he made the connection. He connected the gift to the father. And that's when his heart was changed. Well, that's what that word of thanks does. It connects the gifts all around us to the father. The Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans to a church where he'd never been before. And he's, he's laying out the basics of the faith. And in chapter 1, in laying out the basics of the faith, he's talking about that connection. That connection to, to all that, that we see, all that we hear. That connection to life. That, that connection is made to God. And then he talks about those who, who don't make the connection. And in chapter 1, verse 21, he says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, and their foolish hearts were darkened. That it's not enough to know God, that it's the connection between the everyday and the ordinary in the giving of thanks that brings healing, it brings light, it brings strength to our hearts. Because it connects everything we see, everything we do, everything we hear. It connects our lives to God. And it's that healing word of thanks. It's that healing word of thanks that we come to practice this morning. But I also want to invite you to practice it all week long. The healing word of thanks. Well, it's not only the word of thanks... It's also the word of encouragement. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 says, Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. That one of the reasons that, that we come together every week is to stimulate one another to love and good deeds by encouraging one another, encouraging one another. I began to study that word encouragement. Well, you can tell from looking at it that the root of the word is courage, to encourage. But what I didn't know is the root of the word courage is the Latin word core, core, which means heart. And literally, encourage means to put the heart into. And it's the encouragement, the building up that puts the heart into the people around us. It's what gives the people around us strength and healing. Is that word of an encouragement. King Duncan tells a story about a church that every year, the days leading up to Easter, the 40 days leading up to Easter, they would, they would 
have a, a series. It would be a different series every, every year. And this particular year, it was called the 40 Days of Love. And each week they would practice a, a, a word of love leading up to Easter. In the first week, it, they practiced the, the word of encouragement in the 40 days of love. Well, after the first sermon, pastor said, one of his members came up to him and said, preacher, you know, this whole thing about, you know, encouraging words and you encouraging people to, to send a letter to encur of encouragement uh, to, the, to the people around us. He said, the people, the people around me, they know that I love them. I don't need to, all this sentimental and soupy stuff, I don't need to be writing them letters. My wife, my children, my family, they know that I love them. I, and I'm not going to be participating this year in this 40, 40 days of love and, and writing letters of encouragement to people in this first week. Well, the pastor was surprised. The next week came around and the fellow that told him he wouldn't be participating was sitting there in the in the service. At the end of the service, he came up to the pastor and he said, you remember last week that I told you that I wouldn't be taking part in this, these, these words of encouragement and writing letters. He said, I, I changed my mind on Wednesday. The pastor said, what happened Wednesday? He said, well, Wednesday, I received one of those letters and I've been keeping it in my pocket and he patted his pocket. He said, I've been keeping it right here ever since. He said, every time I read these words, tears come to my eyes. And that's what encouragement does. It puts the heart, it puts the strength, it puts the healing into folks. And, and, and that's what Scripture says, why we come together. Why we come together as a church to stimulate one another to, to love and good deeds, to, to put the heart into each other. And Lord knows that now, maybe more than ever, we need that encouragement. We need our coming together. We need to practice to offer those words of encouragement. They're healing words, the words of encouragement. They're healing words, the words of thanks. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is that, that word of forgiveness. In Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas are on their first missionary journey. And they've stopped at a place called Pisidian Antioch. It's the Sabbath day and they enter into the synagogue. And there the synagogue, head of the synagogue, reads from Scripture the way that the head of the synagogue does every Sabbath day. And at the end of reading the Scripture, the head of the synagogue says if if any of you have a message of encouragement, say it. And I like the implication there because it, it implies that if you don't have a message of encouragement, keep your mouth shut. And so Paul stands up. Paul is a, is a, a visiting rabbi and, and it's appropriate for him to stand up. And the message that he has for the synagogue there in Pisidian Antioch is the message the message of the church. It's the message of Jesus. And he tells the people that, that Jesus is the one that the whole of the Old Testament talks about. And that Jesus came and he, he walked among us and that he was crucified on a cross. He was executed. Crucified on a cross. He was laid in a tomb and then he rose from the grave. Paul goes on to say that for many days he appeared to, to people. Paul says that he, at one time he appeared to as many as 500 people at one time. That he appeared to people again and again and again. Though that he was dead and laid in a grave that God raised him from the dead. And then Paul goes on to say in Acts 13 verse 38 and 39. Brothers understand what I'm telling you. You can have forgiveness of your sins through Jesus. The law of Moses could not free you from your sins. But through Jesus, everyone who believes is free from all sins. That's the word of forgiveness. Free from all sins. Not just the lightweight sins. Not just the, the sins that are kind of, you know, well, I made a little mistake here or there. No, all sins. 
Not just the lightweight sins or the welterweight sins, the heavyweight sins. The sins that we even have a hard time forgiving ourselves for. That that's what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. That he forgave our sins. And it's that word of forgiveness. That word of forgiveness that means we can lay down our defenses. We can lay down our excuses. We can lay down our self-justification. We can lay down our sin and our shame. And it's that word of forgiveness that we come here every Sunday to practice. That we may have made a mess of it the week before, but it's here. It's here in the, in the presence of the risen Christ, the one who, who offers that forgiveness for you and for me, and not only offers it, but gives us strength. That he meets us here in this place called worship, and he gives healing strength for the week to come. And that word, forgiveness. And the word of forgiveness. One of my favorite stories is a story of Mahalia Mullins. She lived in Tennessee many years ago, and she was what was referred to as a reputable moonshiner. Now, I'm not real sure what you have to do to be a reputable moonshiner. I, I, maybe her, her moonshine didn't blind people, and that's what made her a reputable moonshiner. But she was a reputable moonshiner, so th- what the law did was th- they pretty much just looked past Mahalia Mullins. But she was known as a a reputable moonshiner. The second thing she was known for is she was known for weighing over 500 pounds. So her nickname was Big Haley. Well, there was a new sheriff in town. He was elected sheriff with a platform of of cleaning up the, the county, especially moonshine. Well, he went to the judge, told the judge that that he needed a a warrant to arrest Big Haley. Well, the judge signed the warrant, and with a a wry smile on his face, he said, let me know how that turns out. Well, the sheriff went to Big Haley's cabin. Everybody knew where Big Haley lived. He knew where the cabin was, and when he went inside, there was something he didn't know, that Big Haley had outgrown the doors of the cabin. So he couldn't get her out of her cabin. He reported back to the judge, Big Haley is catchable, but not fetchable. (laughs) We come here every Sunday, every week, to catch that word of forgiveness, that word that we need, that word that gives healing, it gives restoration. That we meet Jesus here in this place and he gives us that word of forgiveness and we catch it. But we, we're here on this earth not just to catch it. We're here on this earth to fetch it. To fetch it. To fetch that word of forgiveness and to carry it into a world. Maybe now more than ever is desperate to hear that word of forgiveness. That word that travels from this place through you and me. It's a word that brings healing. It's a word that brings healing. This morning, it may be that you you knew that in your head that, that Jesus on the cross gave forgiveness, but you thought that what you did was too big for him to forgive. Hear the good news, the healing news, that Jesus came to forgive not just the lightweight sins or the welterweight sins, but the heavyweight sins too. Even the very sin that you thought you couldn't be forgiven. He gave his life on the cross to do that and he rose from the grave to give you and me power to receive that forgiveness and to walk in power, not to be slaves of sin, but to be free, to be free, to be free from the defenses, from the excuses, from the justification, from the sin and the, and the shame, and to walk from this place a, 
a healthy people, a whole of people who know that that healing word of forgiveness. Well, it may be that you've known that healing word, but you've not carried it into the world. You've not fetched it. You caught it, but you didn't fetch it. And this morning, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you that the the power of the risen Christ gives you strength enough to carry it here from this place today. Pray with me. Jesus, we all know that that word of forgiveness, that's among the most healing and refreshing words of all. And it's the word that, that we long for. That word of encouragement, that word of thanks. We know how much we need it. We know how much we appreciate those words, but maybe we, we caught those words, but we didn't, didn't bring them home with us. We didn't bring them to work with us. We didn't bring them to school or to the neighborhood with us. Jesus, you rose from the dead to give us power. Power that lives not not just off up in heaven, but that that power lives through us. That we might be the healing word, the risen Christ in a world that needs to know healing. Lord, live through us that healing word of forgiveness that this week people may see and hear that they may experience your word, your healing word of forgiveness as you live it through us. It may be that word of encouragement that um, this day you gave us a a shake or a nudge and we know just who it is we need to stimulate to love to good deeds by helping put the heart back in them with words that will give them heart strength healing courage Lord connect all we do all we see our work, our play, all we hear to your great gifts and help us practice starting this day that word of thanks. There's healing in it. And Lord, you know we need that healing word. Thank you for this day and may we never take that word of thanks. Your presence among us May we never take it for granted. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, and what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our 
When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.